your kidneys have to filter that out. If it goes into your bloodstream and passes through the liver and passes through the kidneys, your kidneys will either be able to filter it or they won't. And if they can't filter it, it'll get forced through and cause some damage on the way, way past. Uh, but Amanda Bryce's Primo and Masteron have shot up. Holy shit. Yeah, Holy shit. Primo. It's it's back now. Eh? The, 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 the producers are producing. <laughs> Steve, I ordered 700 kilos of Primo. It's going to be back in stock soon. <laughs> Yes, 700 kilos. Yes, 700 kilos. That's how much they were. I'm like, holy shit. And then you look at the price list, and you're like, Jesus Christ, the prices have gone up tremendously. So at least the surprise, they're picking up the supply again. Uh, so the dryness is soon to uh, end, uh, the, the steroid dr uh, drought. But uh, prices are, I know, but the dollar is not worth much anymore. I hate to say it. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, DXY is coming down from 100 17 to 99 so maybe that's why the prices are going up because the dollar the value of the dollar is going down start printing man start printing kurt <laughs> start start printing those dollars <laughs> what else do we want to discuss for this podcast uh i had like well, uh, we can discuss poloxamer real quick sure we uh, we had a little bit of a boo boo last week, our last uh, last uh, podcast where we went for Baloxone. That's my fault. Yeah, that's okay. It's, it happens. <laughs> I, I said to Bromo standalone for a very long time instead of Dromo standalone for Dross standalone. So sometimes you get a boo boo in your brain and then it sticks and you're like, why can't I find it? But it's Paloxomer 88. Let me see, what was that? Uh... And so that we did find, I did find. Balak saying 188 in certain places. But okay. <clears throat> it was patents where you went into the patent and it just sort of ended, ended in a dead end. Mm. And I was around using these polymers to stabilize growth hormone complexes. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it was like we discussed, there's just no search of it other than what we've seen on that thread of ingredients for growth hormone subtypes, one of them having Balak saying. Mm -hmm. I, I tried looking at um, polymer manufacturers who would make Paloxamer 188 to see would they make Paloxane or Paloxamer as well and couldn't find anything. Hmm. So you found uh, the Paloxamer 88 and you also mm -hmm. sent me a link. I can share that on the screen here. See if I can find of the, the growth hormones that contain... contain contain that kind of stuff. So genotropin, you can see here what it contains, the excipients, and it actually varies per formulation. Now, genotropin is no longer really available, right? Apparently, that's discontinued and replaced for Engenla, the somatro somatrogen gela with the HCG subunit. But then here you see an omnitrope in the 2.8 or the 5.8 milligrams per vial it contains uh, a couple excipients, but then the five milligram pen cartridge, it contains Poloxamer 188. So it even varies between their different formulations. So in the vials, it, it's not contained of Omnitrope, but in the pen cartridge, it is contained. And let's see, Humatrope doesn't have Poloxamer 188. Neutropin doesn't have it. Uh, Sizen doesn't have it. Sizen uh, being one of the best, obviously. And then Nordetropin does have it. 188. Yeah, and Serostim doesn't either, but it's not listed. No, it's not listed here. Yeah. So Sizen and Serostim, if you want to avoid the Paloxamer 188, uh, that's, oh, actually it does contain it here. Sizen also contains it in the 6 milligram formulation, the 12 milligram formulation, and the 20 milligram formulation cartridges. So it seems that the Paloxamer 188 is mostly found in the cartridges. Right, this is a Nordetropin cart cartridge, Paloxamer 188. Size and cartridges, 188. Maybe that has to do with some of the plastics that the yeah. cartridges well, come in. Genotropin, I don't know, it smells like plastic. Yeah, but they, they don't have it. Oh, good point. Yeah, they I don't have it. I thought it was weird that the genotropin smelled like plastic, though. It smells like hospital, leg oh, yeah. legitimately. Oh, yeah. yeah, like insulin. Oh, yeah, true. same. 
Same. So that's pretty interesting that several of these different growth hormone formulations, again, it's linked down below, guys, in case you want to read it, that, that use different excipients. And maybe based on the excipients, I think that's worthy of a deep dive. I'll make a video about it at one point. Based on the excipients, we might be able to select the best brand of growth hormone. Because all growth hormone is 191 amino acids. But we clearly notice different results between different growth hormone formulations. And I think, uh, Kurt, you sent me something about uh, the uh, UGL, the generics, mm -hmm. right, from China, that one of them contains Paloxomer 188. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't mention the, the, the name anymore, otherwise it goes out of stock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, Dean, you found that Paloxomer 188 might cause some kidney damage. Yeah. Yeah. There's a PubMed article on it. Mm -hmm. It depends on which blocks are 188. I guess there's different grades. Yeah, there's a, a P and there's an, an S S or something, or an S, I thought. Oh, P. You're, you're right. P188. Yeah. P. yeah, and an NT, I think. And the P was more deleterious for your kidneys. Now, we're talking about milligrams upon milligrams being administered in an animal model. And then unfortunately well, here in the excipients, they don't really mention how much paloxomer is contained within a cartridge of yeah. uh, omnitrope or nortitropin. I've seen it in clients. Again, we don't know the amount, right? But I, mm -hmm. in the dose, when the dose went above in some of the generics, you know, above six IUs, the creatinine level started to rise. And then yeah. when they brought it back down, it went within weeks, went right back down. And you saw that in an animal model as well, where creatinine mm -hmm. shot up like 10 milligrams paloxomer, mm -hmm. uh, 188p. Now, is that transient, temporary? I'm not going to take the risk on someone's kidneys with it to try to figure that out. Well, you saw clear um, hysteros, hysteros, histological, <laughs> how mm. do you pronounce it? Where yep. they histological. Take, histological, right? Where they take an image of the, you know, the kidney tissue and you see clear, uh, you know, nephrotic uh, tissue or, or, or changes to the nephrons. Um, and I would consider that to be permanent. Yeah. Well, the NF is more toxic than the P. Oh, the NF. Okay. Renal the dysfunction NF. observed in clinical studies of P188-NF is not observed in clinical studies of P188-P. So okay. I'm guessing the Chinese companies are probably using the NF because it's cheaper. Or I would guess right. it's cheaper. Mm, they don't care. Wouldn't it surprise me. Yeah, and we don't see that in the table 13 of, um, you know, that, that PubMed article. Or uh, what is it called? The books from the National Library of Medicine. We don't really see the difference. I'm sure we could figure it out. Um, I think and then see which, which pharmaceutical growth hormone is the most kidney toxic. <laughs> 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 that would be a fucking good video, I think. I, oh, man. I think what what I sent originally when I looked into pharmaceutically why Plux for 188 is chosen is because of it is a a surfactant. So mm -hmm. basically it just makes it more stable in solution once it's reconstituted. And that's probably why, again, the cartridges tend to be reconstituted cartridges you load into the pen. Um, if we think about it, Plux for 188, from what I remember reading into it, it's 188 for a reason. That's how many polymers are, are within it. And obviously it's a huge, if you want to put it bluntly, a huge plastic chain, if you wanted to say mm -hmm. it that way, like a, a polymer tends to be a term used towards plastics, which are just carbon based molecules. Anyway, now your, your kidneys have to filter that out. If it goes into your bloodstream and, you know, passes through the liver and passes through the kidneys, your kidneys will either be able to filter it or they won't. And if they can't filter it, it'll get forced through and cause some damage on the way, way past. <clears throat> so I guess it is probably the concentration of the paloxomer within the product that, like when you look at um, peptide manufacturing, and Kurt talked about this before as well, certain um, <clears throat> manufacturers will bulk up a peptide product with mm -hmm. mannitol. Yeah. Like it has to have an excipient. You know, if you've got, if you've got a vial of five milligrams BPC-157, do you think that whole white puck inside mm -hmm. that vial is five milligrams of BPC? It, it's had to be uh, suspended in solution with mannitol and other excipients and then it's freeze dried. Right. And then you're left with a puck of powder that you can actually visibly see and uh, dilute and, and make soluble that 
it's probably the amount that's in it. And if you have, mm. you know, Chinese manufacturers that are looking for quick ways to make a more stable yep. product, they're going to add more Paloxmer to the product to make it more stable in solution. So it doesn't rapidly break down. If someone suspends it, puts it in the fridge, it'll have a, a shelf life in the fridge of, what, three or four days. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would say where I see the difference between the pharma and the, and the, the UGL stuff is not necessarily at the lower doses, right? It's kind of hard to tell what's even occurring at the lower doses, but as the dose goes up and up and up, the pharma keeps going, right? In its effectiveness, where the, the UGL seems to flat down and almost go the opposite direction. Like when Chase and I both used whole bottles of that reputable underground lab, we have mm -hmm. the opposite effect that Serastim has. The weight, our weight start to drop, like your muscles start to get flat and stringy, probably from too much mannitol and things like that. Mm -hmm. But the effects were totally different, right? Whereas like on a lower dose, you could probably justify using it, you know, for some level of fat loss or something, but it comes to using a dose for hyperplasia, it's just not occurring. With the yeah. And, you, and, and funnily enough, if you do serum tests in UGL or pharma, it's, it almost comes back similarly now. And the, the, with the potency being 98 to 99.7% between UGL and pharma, it's pretty comparable. So I have, I have generics here that, or UGLs that, that give me, 34, 36 nanograms per milliliter after a 10 IU shot in the shoulder, two and a half hours before mm -hmm. drawing blood, which is comparable, very similar to what I would get for pharmaceutical grades. But I think the binders and excipients give you some sort sure. of altered response. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, just because it's showing the blood doesn't mean it's doing the same thing. It's like the no, exactly. Yeah. Just because it binds to the end receptor doesn't mean anything's occurring at the nucleus. No. Um, 